Welcome to our ERC Virtual Media Expert Session, where I am pleased to host Teresa Rolas Wingen, who is co chair of the BLS Science and uh, Education uh, Committee. Teresa, good morning. How are you doing, Teresa? Well, uh, I think uh, better and better, but these are strange times. Okay, thank you for uh, being uh, with us. Teresa, how do we safely confirm cardiac arrest in a victim with suspected or confirmed COVID 19? So our general definition of a cardiac arrest is when a person is unresponsive and not breathing normally. Um, and I think assessing whether a person is breathing normally or not is by far the most difficult part of, of recognizing a cardiac arrest. And normally we would ask people to open the airway, place their face next to the victim's mouth or nose, and we say, look, listen, and feel for normal breathing. Now, to decrease the risk of infection uh, in the situation that many of us are in right now, we recommend that um, cardiac arrest is addressed by first checking for responsiveness by shaking or talking or maybe even shouting at the person. And then secondly, checking for breathing by just simply looking for normal breathing. So in any situation where COVID infection could be suspected, we do not think that rescuers should be opening the airway or placing their face next to the victim's mouth or nose. Okay, I imagine people will ask themselves, is it safe to perform CPR and, and especially what about ventilations? Yeah, and I think uh, CPR is considered an aerosol generating procedure to some extent. And um, as such, I think rescuers should protect themselves. Now for lay rescuers, I think the most important message is to call the emergency services and follow whatever advice they're giving uh, by their local emergency call takers or dispatchers because I think there is significant variations in the risk of infection across Europe and, and local authorities will always be your best source for, for updated risk assessments. Um, but we have suggested, however, that it might be reasonable for uh, a lay rescuer to place a cloth or a towel to cover the person's um, nose or mouth as a protective measure. And generally we would recommend limiting CPR to compression only for lay persons in this setting. And uh, any person that has performed CPR should wash their hands thoroughly as soon as they can. And they should, um, again, contact their, their local health service to get advice about um, screening. I think uh, for healthcare professionals, they should definitely be using airborne precaution uh, PPE when they are doing chest compressions or airway or ventilation interventions. And I think in the BLS setting, it's important to limit the number of people in the room and have the most skilled person handling the airways. And I think depending on the skill level of the providers, we recommend one of two things. Now, either that you place an oxygen mask on the patient's face and give oxygen and uh, provide compression only CPR while you're waiting for your ALS uh, team, or a standard CPR, 30 to two CPR with bag mask ventilation. Now, I think if the team is comfortable doing this, uh, then they should be using a HEPA filter between the bag and the mask, and they should be pretty confident that they can ventilate effectively with a very tight mask seal. And I'd say under these conditions, I consider CPR to be safe. Okay, well, we know that early defibrillation is important. Do you consider uh, defibrillation as an aerosol producing procedure? So for this recommendation, we're leaning heavily on the systematic review that was done by ILCOR uh, very recently, looking at this specific question. So the evidence that we do have would suggest that defibrillation is unlikely to be an aerosol generating procedure. And this is why we're suggesting it might be reasonable to defibrillate in a situation where one might have access to a defibrillator, but perhaps only be wearing droplet precaution PPE. So meaning fluid resistant surgical mask, eye protection, short sleeve apron and gloves. I think the protection many of us are, are using in, in lower risk settings. Now, I think this is intended as a possible life-saving measure for someone with a sudden VF or VT, where you want to avoid having to wait uh, for the full Russas team to, to arrive. Okay, thank you very much, Teresa, for those clear uh, answers and uh, for taking the time to be with us. No problem. Take care, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.